Dr. Reese is a proud member of the IO, IAOMT. Thank you. Thank you. Um, honored to be here and uh, hope all of you guys uh, learned something from this afternoon as well too. So that topic of discussion is IV therapy that we can utilize as dentists, naturopaths uh, in our office, uh, but then also a hands-on clinic uh, after this for the next uh, remaining of the afternoon. So if you're not accomplished or not confident in your venipuncture therapy, stick around so we can offer some help. It's not just myself, there's several other clinicians and practitioners here as well that uh, can help in, in teaching this. You know what, hear me okay? No problem? Okay, I'm not always the most verbal, although I do have strong opinions, you can't always hear them, so I'll do my best here. Um, <clears throat> do practice in Indianapolis. Uh, you'll see my wife uh, here as well this weekend. She is a naturopath that we both uh, accomplished this with uh, Phil Malka and Bob Harris's training. Um, I had a conversation uh, a week ago, a couple weeks ago with another colleague in Indianapolis who's kind of like, so how'd you get down this path of being a holistic or naturopathic dentist? Said, I, I got here kicking and screaming, drugged the whole way by my wife, who was always oriented this way, but uh, my eyes have been opened. So I have a non-specialized, non-limited practice, as I like to call it. So we offer a lot of comprehensive care that does involve root canal therapy when appropriate. Uh, the emphasis is on reconstructive dentistry, uh, implant placement, and restoration as well, too. So I've been holistic since about 2010. Uh, member of American Dental Society of Anesthesiology, which is mostly how I utilize uh, venipuncture in the office, um, master with the AGD. Um, and you can read for yourself as well, too. So I'm um, very proud of the naturopathic orientation I have in my practice now, and uh, certainly has opened the door and, and keeps the phone ringing uh, for uh, new patient care. So I've used this in my, in my practice um, Full confession, I started out learning phlebotomy to buy groceries in dental school, so that's a very distinct advantage, but you will get more training this afternoon than I got 30-some years ago learning how to do uh, blood draws in a diabetic hospital in Indianapolis. <clears throat> so I began placing and restoring implants early in my career and realized the need for sedation, so I became qualified in, in 86. Uh, it wasn't until 89 that the state required us to be certified uh, to do IV uh, conscious sedation. Have a la very large percentage of phobic clientele uh, as well too. So I tell patients, one of us is gonna be sedated to get through this and, and you want it to be yourself, not me. Um, <clears throat> and do have a consistent new clientele of uh, safe um, requiring uh, and requesting safe amalgam removal. Uh, and for that, we use a lot of vitamin C therapy for detoxification and other things as well too. So the topics of discussion for this afternoon will focus around using venous blood products to support healing, but then also what we can administer nutritional therapeutic supplementation by way of an IV administration. And putting this program together back in uh, early June, and uh, I apologize, not all the content that you will see today is on the protocol, but I'll try to get that to uh, fair. And if you wanna download that as well too, you can do that. Um, but this is downtown Indianapolis, went out for a bike ride and the, on a Saturday morning. Time I got downtown, it was you know, hot and sweaty and, and rode by this place I hadn't noticed before, but uh, it says Vitality IV Bar. So, and I've seen them in a couple other areas and cities around town, never in Indianapolis till this summer. And I thought, hmm, interesting. So I rode by and I thought, I'm gonna go back and stop in and talk to them for a little bit. And uh, they're, they're basically, uh, trying to serve the clientele that is very motivated for self-help and wants to detoxify. You guys, we got a lot of people coming in for morning after hangovers wanting to, to get their head cleared, but they're offering glutathione, a vitamin C. That's just some of the things I pulled off of their website that they're offering. Those fees that they're charging, though, are minimal amounts that they're giving compared to what I'm going to be uh, proposing and what I use in my office as well, too. But it, it is very it's a sought-after uh, health therapy by many of your patients, whether you're being a dental or uh, holistic integrated practice. So IV supplementation that we use, vitamin C, but we're gonna defer it to uh, Dr. Levy's uh, this morning's lecture uh, on the content for that. We'll also give vitamin B, glutathione, procaine, um, working towards um, a Myers cocktail um, recipe to RX2 compound. So, I'm gonna leave me at all. Okay. 
I lost my mind. Um, spent a lot of time trying to find a good source for vitamin therapy. Um, uh, Shine has a medical catalog, so if you're a Shine client and want to use it, that's a good place to start for needles, uh, tubing, so forth. But as far as for the vitamin C, vitamin B, um, two years ago, I think it was at the Savannah meeting of this organization, there's RxQ Compounding. I've got their phone number up, we'll share it with a little bit as well too, but is the least expensive and least troublesome uh, pharmacy to deal with on getting these supplies. Um, and starting to work with them on putting together a Myers cocktail as well too. Calcium gluconate and magnesium chloride uh, we'll also discuss. So in the venous blood utilization uh, format, PRP I've been doing for 20 years probably with uh, implant surgery. Uh, that's an injectable form, platelet-rich plasma. PRF, platelet-rich fibrin, which you make a membrane or a plug out of, seems to have more press from uh, Chokrin in uh, Germany. My experience in history has been with PRP. I use both of them in the practice, depending on, on the, uh, the situation. Autohemotherapy is something else. We've got a case study I want to show and share with you. Um, minor autohemotherapy is something that you'd be uh, capable of in your practice. Major autohemotherapy is very worthwhile therapy as well, but probably something you want to leave to your integrated physicians to do. Um, probably out of the realm of dentistry. I'm going to hold on to this since I'm struggling anyway. Uh, so utilization of venous blood, platelet-rich plasma. Platelets are also the thrombocytes. And we think of a, thumb, uh, a platelet aggregation that happens at the site of a tissue injury or wound. So you'd stop and ask yourself, why are thrombocytes or the platelets so important for that wound healing? Well, they've got all the, the molecular components needed for healing. ATP, ADP for energy, serotonins for relief of pain, calcium. It's the alpha granules that we're using to that hold the growth factors and the cytokines and that help modulate the inflammation and then on towards the healing. So it, you, you know, think about why do we have platelets or, or, or thrombocytes and why are they congregating at the site of an injury? They've got everything that's needed for the whole healing process to start. So um, here we have uh, the alpha granules, and then there's dense granules as well, too, in the platelets. So what are growth factors? Both morphogenic proteins, which is what caught my interest uh, early on in using PRP, is a type of a growth factor, um, but a growth factor is any group of proteins that can stimulate the growth of specific tissues. So they play an important role in cell differentiation, cell division, and uh, occur in all organisms, not just uh, the human body. So the PRP factors of note that we're gonna uh, utilize in dentistry or surgery, PDGF, which is play the derived growth factor, transforming growth factor beta one, and then uh, VEGF, one of the primary ones for oral surgery healing, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor, and then endothelial growth factor as well too. All these important cytokines, probably have heard that somewhere in your past and in your education, but cytokines are small signaling proteins. So they are divided into three groups, the uh, autocrine signaling, which is signaling within a cell to turn on mitochondrial uh, activation a lot of times, paracrine signaling, which is means cytokines talking to cells, adjacent cells uh, to help uh, increase healing or endocrine signaling, which is much like a uh, hormone therapy where they're signaling tissue uh, at a distant location from where the injury is or where that cytokine is released. So PRP is appropriate in hard and soft tissue applications. Um, in the uh, extraction sites, you can use PRP injected after an extraction. You can use uh, platelet-rich fibrin. If you suture in the socket, I'm gonna give you some tips about that. Uh, I've kind of worked away from, from using uh, a plug of platelet-rich fibrin, where I'll use it uh, pretty much only in a membrane form now. Uh, PRP, the injectable, can be injected under a flap uh, before suturing. Uh, endodontic surgery with apicose and curatage, very helpful for healing. Periodontal defects, whether it be connective tissue grass, any type of grass, PRP is going to accelerate the healing <clears throat> that you have. 
So in my practice with implant placement without failure, we're using PRP. Occasionally we'll use a PRF uh, membrane as well too, but it's injected into the osteotomy site before the implant goes in. If we're, we're doing flap surgery, it's uh, also uh, squirted, if you will, uh, irrigated underneath the flap before closure. The fibrin that you collect from the, the red top tubes or the yellow top tubes actually is fibrin rich, which is what we want for clotting. So you can wet a couple two by twos with it, put it on the surgery site, and it goes a long way for uh, hemostasis. So uh, this was a study conducted. Jim Rutkowski is a good friend and colleague. Uh, is a dentist and a PhD in uh, Pennsylvania, but I learned most of my PRP training from. Uh, he's very well published as well, too, and respect the community, in the, in the uh, community, community uh, especially with the implant dentistry. Uh, but did an analysis on, on wisdom tooth extraction sites. One side he used PRP, the other side he didn't use PRP. Conclusion was, was pretty remarkable that in a two week period. Would that be easier for you? It probably would be. Is that on? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Let's take that out of your pocket. Sorry about that. So uh, outcomes, uh, as you can read, early increase in bone density at the PRP site, and it took about six weeks for the control site to catch up with the same amount of bone density that occurred in two weeks. That's pretty remarkable uh, improvement with a PRP. So there's another study carried out on using uh, PRP or autologous blood products injection in uh, chronic TMJ dislocations, which I found very interesting. Their conclusion, this was published in Triple O, which doesn't take anything lightly, um, and uh, concluded that the uh, injection of autologous blood into TMJ patients with chronic recurrent dislocation, which is one of the most difficult things to resolve, those of you that are involved in TMJ treatment, uh, happened or improved better than any other therapy and uh, <clears throat> uh, had a much greater result than uh, any other injection therapy, whether it be steroid as well, too. So there's a lot of healing to be done with simple venous products that we can take out of our own patient's blood. Uh, CDT does provide a code that you can use to charge for PRP, whether it be the platelets or fibrin collection, uh, the CDT 7921. Um, our office, we're using 200, or our fee is 238 for that. I don't think we bothered to submit it to, uh, to insurance, but it, it, there is a CDA code for it. Um, patient responses are, boy, I really like that idea, especially they have a holistic bent and are integrated. They don't want to use anybody else's blood products or bone products. Um, explain the process to them where we're taking their own blood out, we're spinning it down, concentrate the platelets that has all the healing properties in their own blood and placing it where we need it most, the site of a surgery, injury, extraction. Uh, they're, they readily comment that makes good sense and explain it to them in those terms. You, I just don't get pushback on it. So it's very well uh, accepted recommendation. And the holistic minded patients, of course, are very readily uh, accepting of it because they're using their own blood products. <clears throat> there is, uh, this is a Salvin uh, centrifuge, which is tabletop model, very simple and expensive. We've got some catalogs downstairs. If you're not familiar with this dental company, uh, pick up a catalog and leaf through it. If you want to get started in it for under $1,000, they'll send you a kit with, um, it's a Jim Rakowski kit, I believe they refer to it as, with the centrifuge, sample tubes to use for PRP, PRF, some uh, uh, tourniquets to use and needles to use to get started as well too. So PRP, uh, the simplified protocol that, that I still use, use the Salvin centrifuge. I have the, the Duo, which is the, the big protocol that's uh, proposed by uh, Schokrin in Germany. And I quite honestly, I just pulled my old centrifuge back up out of the closet downstairs and I'm using it because I'm getting better results with it, I, I feel. So PRP, the platelet-rich uh, plasma, <clears throat> we're gonna draw two yellow tubes Yellow tubes mean the top of it is yellow because it has a sodium citrate, which is an anticoagulant in it. So we don't want that blood to start to coagulate when we're uh, concentrating the platelets. Centrifuge it, opposite of each other, so it's not like a washing machine that's out of sync or out of balance. And uh, centrifuge that for 10 minutes. You wanna draw off the top yellow serum, which is the fibrin. If you're doing flap surgery and you want something for anticoagulant benefits, save that, have your assistants wet two by two gauze with that. When you're done with thirds or whatever, they close on that and it really shuts down any uh, extraneous bleeding uh, after a surgery. 
So you need a, a 3cc syringe uh, to draw that out, be able to fit it in the vacutainer tube, and then you want to draw off the buffy coat, as it's referred to as, which is a very, uh, very bottom white coat, white coat being the white blood cells, um, and then just above the, the packed whole blood cells at the bottom of that. So visually then, um, <clears throat> this is an older tube that's blue instead of yellow. Uh, same thing, it has an anticoagulant in it. So after you, you spin it, centrifuge it, let it set for about three to four minutes. And then the, uh, when you take it out, this is the pack, the red blood cells, whole pack cells. This lighter, clear, thin area is the fibrin, which you draw that off so you can get down to the buffy coat in between. So you've got about one to two cc's of buffy coat or plate-rich plasma in this area here. If we take up the white blood cells, it's not a problem. You're going to pick up some of the red blood cells as well, too. This is all delegated to the assistants in my office. It's easily, uh, easily done. They get some red blood cells in. It's not a deal breaker. They get too much of the fibrin in. It's not a deal breaker, too. We just want to focus uh, on that buffy coat right in between. So after those are spun down, this is what it looks like. Let it set so you get a little bit of leveling of this buffy coat here um, before you draw it down. And then this is the platelet poor plasma or fibrin here, draw that off, and then, then it's much easier to go after uh, the PRP in between here. So you need that smaller 3cc syringe, which we'll have downstairs to be able to uh, get a needle down to the bottom. So you want to be set up when you have that. <clears throat> PRF, or platelet-rich fibrin, contains leukocytes, which are the white blood cells to fight infection, also has the cytokines and intercellular messengers. Structural proteins, which helps in the healing scaffolding, the growth factors and proteins as well, too. Bottom line, on platelet-rich fibrin, I'm more inclined to use it now than I was four or five years ago. It does support the immune system to uh, reduce infection. It does help to stop bleeding, accelerates healing as well, too. Early on, I was just using plugs, which let me show you what that looks like here in a little bit. Uh, so the fibrin mesh or the platelet-rich fibrin, it's great for soft tissue closure when it's flattened down. You can suture to it. You just don't want to be very aggressive with it. have to use a very thin needle uh, and a thin suture with that as well, too. So you can use it over socket grafts when you're doing primary closure. I would still encourage you, what I've done is still use a collotape plug, flatten it down, put that in over top of your fibrin mesh to hold it in place. Uh, otherwise, that fibrin mesh tends to work its way out four or five days, which is, a, which is, which is the lifespan of, of fibrin. You lose it, and I've had more occasions than what I want of ending up with a dry socket when that's what I'm trying to avoid by increasing the healing. So I think there's just too much water content in the plug itself. You put it in a, in a dish or between two glass slabs and flatten it out. Um, you're reducing that moisture and that water content, and it's uh, much more, I think, viable for that. So with the platelet-rich fibrin, we're uh, using the red top tubes for that. So there's, there's no additive in these vacutainer tubes, uh, unlike the yellow top, which has the sodium citrate in it. Uh, this is, would be good for filling in uh, osteocavitations, jawbone osteonecrosis defects as well, after you've curetted, cleaned those out, apical areas, after you've cleaned the disease infection out of that then I'd recommend uh, a plug uh, in those situations. Still get rid of a lot of the moisture in it. I think it has better durability. So I don't recommend just pulling the plug out of the tube and just using it en masse. I've had trouble with that. So the, the gelling red top tubes, collect two full tubes, again, a 10 minute centrifuge, and then a plug uh, that forms on the top is pulled out. So you can put these between two glass slabs, which is old technology, simple technology, uh, we used to do to get a nice membrane if you want to suture with it, or you can mold it in wet gauze, um, and then, or just a lot of times I'll just put it on a dry two by two gauze and let that wick out all of the, a lot of that excess moisture before we use it. Or we can use the stainless steel, the fiber and mesh boxes that are real popular now. Salvin has one, has uh, uh, those in the catalog that you can see that downstairs as well too. So these are the red top tubes after it's spun down, 10 minutes. And then that's the fibrin mesh with some adds and force. Just pull that out, and it looks exactly like a snot ball that it is. And then cut off the, the red cells, and then you can work that, mold that in your hand, or use it as is, but I would discourage you from using it just like it is. You want to get rid of some of that moisture. I think it's just too prone to dissolving too quickly, and then you've got a dry socket situation that can occur 
uh, which I've seen more often than, than not in my practice. So we quit doing that several years ago. So with the mesh, when you flatten that out in the, the box here, you'll get, uh, you'll cut this off and then we can cut that into two different pieces, have two nice little membranes that we can work with. Um, so on the membrane application on the left, this is a, uh, a summer's lift. So um, sinus graft with or without a puncture into the sinus or a perforation of that sinus. Uh, used to use collotape, now I'll use uh, the membrane mesh, put it in, then put my graft in, and then thread the implant in, and it just automatically tints it up. The uh, Snyderian membrane will tint over that and grow over that fiber and mesh a lot quicker than it will anything else. Um, on the right side was a situation where a medial implant on a cuspid, where the cuspid root tip is always almost in the vestibule or very little bone with that, and we took that tooth out, there was that defect, so put a mesh in, folded it in, and, and uh, worked it towards the, the labial plate of that defect, and then put graft in uh, after that, and then the implant as well, too. So you can get very creative with the use of it. Sticky bone, uh, we're getting a lot of press in, in uh, my circle of implant dentistry, which is basically a combination of the fiber and mesh, and then whatever bone grafting you're doing. So if you're extracting teeth and you want to maintain that socket site for immediate or future implant placement, or actually future implant placement, graft bone in it, putting that bone in a fiber and mesh creates a sticky bone, so it's a lot easier to handle. I find that's a lot more appropriate to use when you've got a ridge defect and you want to graft bone to that. Put your bone on the site and then on the fiber and mesh as well too. Put it down, flap over that, and then uh, before you close that flap, put PRP or platelet-rich plasma. Does a nice job of, of healing well with very little um, draw back to it. Again, you don't have to go back in after the mesh uh, like you do with uh, cytoplasts. So ozonated PRP. <clears throat> Check see how I'm doing time-wise here. So ozonated PRP. Uh, PRP is the, uh, is the injectable type. So I've gone to ozonating that a couple years ago and using it as an injection intramedullary on some uh, focal defect areas prior root canal or prior infections um, that weren't symptomatic but were evident on a cone beam. And it was a lot less, it's not, I still will open up a bad lesion and cure it out and treat it aggressively. But if it's an asymptomatic lesion but still a defect, uh, using ozonated PRP with the X-tip um, has been very, very worthwhile and very helpful. So this video, which hopefully you can see how remarkable it is, There we go. So again, this is the gals. We've collected PRP, separated it off. We're using about three cc's of blood. And then same quantity. I started out just using uh, one cc. Now I'm the same quantity of, of 20 mics of ozone gas and ozonating that platelet-rich plasma with it. So I don't know if you notice from the beginning to the end how pink or oxygenated that PRP is getting um, with that. Um, so you can show that again real quickly. So this will inject into, with the X tips, into the intramedullary bone, whether there's a cavitational lesion or a infection area that's just not responding well. So at about 60 to 90 seconds of going back and forth with that, and we got a nice oxygenized source of platelet-rich plasma. So here's a, a couple tubes then, because we start out with three. After you, you uh, oxygenate it or ozonate it rather then, extrude that extra gas, and then we'll use that in the uh, X tips and place it a couple uh, different sites. That's why we had so much. And uh, we'll just slowly inject that. You do get pushback in it because it's not a hole necessarily you're, at, you're injecting into, but, but poorly uh, calcified medullary spaces. So one last uh, trick or uh, uh, consideration with minor autohemotherapy, and if you, how many are doing using ozone therapy? Quite a few, I suspect. Great. So minor autohemotherapy, if you can get comfortable with taking a, a blood draw sample out, is a nice little tool in your, in your uh, bag of tricks. Um, this is probably the most. This case I'm going to show is probably the most remarkable. Uh, response I've had to any therapy in, in uh, this year at all, but uh, 
They utilize ozone ga the patient's own blood sample, not PRP, their own uh, venous blood sample, uh, and it's best to do it when they're struggling with a particular disease, whether it be poison ivy, a head cold, a virus, or whatever, that the myoautohemotherapy is, you're basically making, creating an auto vaccine against whatever antigen, toxin it is that their body is working to fight against. So if we'll do a venous blood draw, two to three cc's. You can use a straight needle and a syringe to withdraw with that. Um, you just mix that with ozone gas, equal amount, two to three cc's of 20 mics. Uh, mix that back and forth, as we just showed with that lure lock adapter. Uh, until it turns pink. I know Phil will just fill ozone into the syringe and twirl it around, which is acceptable as well, too. I think we get a much better uh, ozonation, a mix with the, uh, the little, little lock adapter. So that auto vaccine, it is critical that you're withdrawing that blood test when the patient's in crisis, when those antigens are circulating around. One other case we had, uh, a young gal that, that works with my wife, um, had an undisclosed or undetermined rash uh, in several places uh, through her body. So I brought home, brought home some needles and, and sick and, and uh, ozone. And I, she didn't get as remarkable effect because of the travel time. Probably there was a breakdown in the ozone gas, um, but uh, it was very effective. So this uh, is the case I'd referred to earlier. It's a 19 year old male. He'd had three episodes within three months of severe intractable oral mucositis, and he had it when I saw him for the first time. He's a you know 19 year old tall athletic kid, gonna play football in college this fall. He's unable to eat, so you gotta be hurting if a 19 year old boy is not gonna eat. So he did report high stress, uh, consulted several other dentists, oral surgeons, ENT allergists. Uh, mom was in with him and said, goes, well, we were told it was herpetic by a couple different practitioners, but it was his whole mouth, so bilateral, so you know it's not a herpetic lesion, but it looked like that, and it, it looked like he was in pain. So this was an intraoral camera, so it, it just it's not as clear a picture as I'd like, but look at that soft palate. It was all the way out to his lips, all the way in the bottom, looked like this as well, too. I mean, just inflamed, angry, angry tissue. And I said, I haven't been able to eat for nearly three months when this occurs. Still don't know if it was food allergy, um, if it was a reaction to stress or whatever. But, you know, I started thinking, okay, we'll give him some periocyanin, which is an antioxidant gel, uh, which is a good product and, and very therapeutic. And then it just occurred to me, yeah, nobody knows what's going on here. I don't know what's going on here either, but we decided to try our suggested real simply, draw a little blood, ozonate it, and uh, gave it to him in his arm. And no other palliative care. The other stuff I sent home with him, um, kind of escapes me right now, but the periocyanin was the one. I think some uh, the tooth and gum tonic, that's this great product, but that probably would have burned like all get out if he had tried it. So a week later, uh, came back and his tissues looked remarkably better. I mean, still evidence of some inflammation, denudation, uh, but mom and patient said, I was so much better the next day. I mean, one treatment. So I was just like, unbelievable, really, remarkable. So keep that in mind as well, too. Again, that's venous blood. It goes into uh, a large muscle group, either the butt or the arm, uh, depending on how big the person is. So some options in nutritional supplementation as well, too. So if you, you know, learning to, to stick a vein, um, why not give them some supplement as well, too? A lot of my training was uh, to do this for sedation purposes, but we probably see as much nowadays for people wanting to detoxify, longer appointments of amalgam removal and restorations. We'll put them on vitamin C, B, uh, the procaine and glutathione as well, too. Hopefully everybody was in attendance this morning and uh, heard uh, uh, Dr. Levy uh, discuss the vitamin C, what a powerful antioxidant it is as an electron donor. Uh, the repair and regeneration of tissue uh, through the collagen support. It uh, is known to decrease the bad or total cholesterol. It's a free radical scavenger because it is antioxidizing, uh, has its great healing properties as well too. There's some claims out there that it's anti-inflammatory, but that's not very well substantiated. Certainly it helps to boost the, uh, the immune regulation to claim it's anti-inflammatory is, isn't well documented or substantiated, so I don't make that claim. Uh, the IV administration uh, allows for a much higher dose than, than GI can tolerate. So, you know, you might get four or five grams in and divided doses uh, in, the, in a 24-hour period, 
but that person is going to be sticking close to the toilet quite a bit too, or, or most often. So typical range is between 12 and a half to 25 grams per session. Uh, that's 12,500 or 25,000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C. Uh, and then, you know, who pays attention to RDA, but RDA is probably like 1,000 milligrams. Uh, oral doses typically max out at the 4,000 to 5,000 in divided doses. So what we can deliver in an intravenous format is so much higher. Uh, risk, Tom didn't talk about it or mention anything about risk with vitamin C. Um, the one thing you want to keep in mind is you do want to do a slower administration. Generally, we're doing that over a 45 to an hour visit. Uh, otherwise, you can cause phlebitis because of the acidity uh, in the vitamin C. So in a 250cc uh, bag of dextrose, we'll give that 30, 45 minutes, generally even longer. It depends on the size uh, of the vein that you've got to work with. Uh, G6 pH deficiency is mentioned in the literature, um, and I, I've had some physician friends mention that as well, too. You've ever had any uh, occurrence of uh, hemolytic anemia? I'm like, no, you know, and it's very well, very poorly reported in the literature as well, too, but it is a risk. Staying at the uh, 12 and a half grams will, will generally keep you well under that. If a person's in a, a detox crisis or they're, they're unhealthy, they know it. Uh, and uh, there's no deficiency, you can do a blood test for the G6PH, but that is the enzyme necessary to protect red blood cells against oxidative damage if they don't have that, and uh, uh, give a high dose of vitamin C, you can uh, throw them into that hemolytic anemia. It's recoverable with, with hydration, um, but it, that occurred just mega doses of vitamin C, so I, I don't worry that much about it at all. On the, the right, there's RxQ compounding, uh, is the uh, the pharmacy that uh, I use and I suggest you guys use as well too. Um, so with uh, with that we can uh, use 50 to 150 grams uh, IV a day has been administered. Again, I'm doing 12 and a half to uh, the 25 a day in in a, in a dose. So um, and that's over an hour as well too. Probably don't want to administer high dose of vitamin C in somebody with uh, kidney disease, a kidney stone former on hemodialysis as well too, just so you don't interfere or get yourself into trouble or possibly cause problems with the patient. So vitamin Bs, uh, very necessary for metabolism. It improves moods. Uh, it decreases stress, increases energy as well too. Uh, there's a lot of, of oral B supplements out there that are very popular. Uh, it's also called brain food because it does energize uh, your brain. So in an oral form, a lot of the Bs are packaged together with the, the B1, 2, 3, 5, uh, and the, the B12 as well, too. Uh, there's a, you, you do have an option between the methylcobalamin and the B12 or the cyanocobalamin. Haven't read any, any documentation, but we tend to favor the, the methylcobalamin um, ourselves. Um, with administration, um, we're going to use a 250cc uh, bag of the dextrose 5W and then a tubing set with it. Um, glutathione, uh, the IV dosing that we use is 400 to 1500 milligrams or 400 to 1400 milligrams uh, in a single dose. And quite honestly, I'm generally around the 400 dose. Glutathione is that master detoxifier due to its antioxidant effect. Uh, it does reduce oxidative stress. Uh, if you've been attending this morning's lecture, it's not the first time you've heard that as well, too, because it's an electron donor, just as vitamin C is. So oral doses have very little effect uh, because it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. Uh, you do want to caution with using repeated doses in uh, patients with liver issues or liver failure. So overall, though, it's a very high safety and uh, a low-risk supplement. Uh, it's supplied in at uh, 2% or 200 milligrams per ml um, uh, vial. So we, we generally are using uh, a 2cc or 400 milligram per session. And that's with our vitamin C cocktail or vitamin B and then procaine as well too. So very inexpensive if you get it from the right sources. Trouble we had earlier in Indianapolis was we went to a compounding pharmacy. Indiana laws were you had to have the patient that it was going to be administered to, the quantity, date of birth, and everything else, and you had to order it specifically. Well, a lot of times patients will come in, we'll do treatment that day, or I want it that day. With RxQ, their designation as a pharmacy is such that they can 
supply us more bulk quantity. A vial of uh, the glutathione, the procaine, will have about a two week duration on it because it is preservative free. So you wanna use it up in that amount of time. But again, the $40 for the vial is not a, a, a real loss uh, if you don't get to use it all. Procaine is also known as the original Novocaine. It's an amino ester type of local anesthetic, which isn't really a good local anesthetic. And when I was going through dental school, it was like, oh, we don't use Novocaine, everybody's allergic to it. And I'm like, okay, so we don't use Novocaine. So the high allergy reports were probably related to the Pava metabolite, the preservative that was used in the Novocaine. Uh, Europe still uses Novocaine quite frequently for oral anesthetic and uh, for trigger point injections. And we're just, I'm, you know, nobody's talking about the allergy or incidence of allergies uh, with their use as well too. So today it's used, again, largely in Europe, South America as a sympatholytic, uh, anti-inflammatory. It does uh, tout it as having a perfusion enhancing effect or mood enhancing effect as well too. Procaine was the main ingredient in a uh, substance called Gerovital H3 back in the 60s and 70s. It was developed uh, by Dr. Anna Aslan in Romania, who had a very popular clinic of the day that uh, a lot of the celebrities would visit her because of her anti-aging therapy that she had. So, and I, I again, thought, how can you prove something's anti-aging? She actually did have one study to do that. Uh, incidentally, uh, FDA did ban the Gero Vital uh, in 82. Um, for what reasons, I couldn't find, but, you know, depends on what your opinion of the FDA is. I think they're, they're off target on a lot of things. Um, Procaine is the preferred anesthetic for trigger point injections. It does seem to open block meridian points. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I know uh, Klinghart uses it for scar injections uh, routinely. Uh, it does seem to be the, the uh, European darling for local injections and IV therapies as well too. It does have documented relief of post-surgical uh, pain when given intravenously as well. It's supplied in a 20 milligram per ml and uh, our dose is, is typically two cc's of that or 40 milligrams in a 250 uh, cc bag. So I started thinking, we were, uh, Joy and I were over at uh, uh, Ulrich Voll's clinic in Switzerland a year and a half, two years ago, and a lot of his therapy, IV therapies, he practices with Dietrich Klinghart, who's kind of the, the go-to as far as uh, integrative health, and uh, they were using procaine intravenously. He was a big fan of it, and that's kind of where I came Kind of using, and it struck me goes, why give procaine intravenously? But thought back to my early training with, with sedation and ACLS, patient that was in uh, atrial tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia, rather, and cardiac arrest, one of the mainline drugs was lidocaine to quiet down that ventriculation and arrest that heart arrest. So it, it makes sense that, okay, if procaine is in the same family of a, a sympatholytic intravenously, what's that gonna do to our nervous system? So that kind of supports the claim as far as it's anti-stress, it's anti-aging uh, as well too. And so the other uh, claim, um, again, that's not <laughs> borne out in the science, but by anecdotal findings uh, with uh, Dietrich and, and uh, Ulrich Voll, that it does seem to minimize those patients who are stuck on in that sympathetic mode. So that's the patients who are chronically ill, who are toxic for metal toxicity, uh, Lyme's disease or whatever, they're just stuck in that chronic stress mode, whereas pro uh, procaine is gonna help break that, that uh, stuck on sympathetic mode. So as posted on uh, World Health Net, uh, procaine's anti-aging benefits uh, include uh, include increased nerve velocity, improved sense of well-being, and potential lifespan. Uh, referred to earlier, uh, the report of Anna Aslan, or the study by Anna Aslan, uh, done back in 65, that uh, cardiac response in lab rats was better. They could learn mazes quicker, those that had the procaine, and the male rats treated did live 20% longer than those that weren't treated. So it is substantiated. One other uh, uh, IV therapies that we're working on, I'm trying to work with uh, RxQ and getting that available as well too to us is uh, the Myers cocktail. I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's very popular uh, among integrative practices as well. It uh, has a 25 year history of uh, IV nutrients and vitamin therapy. 
and uh, uh, John Myers, who uh, developed this in Baltimore, the exact recipe he had is not available to anyone, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, been uh, postulated that uh, um, a lot of the ingredients that I'm gonna show later uh, were the main, main uh, players in that cocktail. So he was claiming relief from acute migraines, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, acute muscle spasms, asthma, TMJ, muscle spasms, upper respiratory infections, chronic sinusitis, seasonal allergies. He had people coming back to his office apparently on a weekly, bi-weekly basis for an uh, infusion of Myers cocktail. Um, the closest thing I could find that said, yeah, this is probably what John Myers was giving at that time, uh, as reported by Alan uh, Gavi, um, and it's the magnesium chloride, calcium gluconate, but then the B12, B6, B5, a B complex as well, and then a high dose of the vitamin C. So hopefully within uh, a month or two, we're gonna have that readily available through uh, RxQ compounding. Again, no vested interest in that other than they've been able to provide to me at a better cost than Shine Medical uh, can or any other pharmacies I've been able to deal with. So the calcium gluconate is great to treat uh, hypocalcemia. Uh, in our practice, we're getting the 100 to 300 milligrams in a slow infusion, so we're giving that into the bag, not into the IV line, so it's a slower infusion. Uh, do not, uh, just for safety's sake, don't administer that with cardiac patients, certainly not patients taking to Joxin who are, 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 hearty, are uh, cardiac patients that are unstable. Uh, the benefits, it's supplying calcium, which is needed for muscle function, bone metabolism, and then calcium uptake, which we want in uh, the healing environment, of course, too couple quick therapies that I would uh, suggest that you all consider, um, and this is outside the realm of nutrition, but dexamethasone and ANSEF uh, I use routinely. Dexamethasone is a corticosteroid, anti-inflammatory, immunosuppressive. There is a marked increase of post-operative uh, well-being and less swelling. So. Um, kids or uh, adults that have taken packed thirds out of. Um, I, I just have not, not given them a dexamethasone so long, it's, it's hard to compare. But there's a huge benefit of that of well-being. It's the late teen-year-old boys who, you know, get that Superman, I warn mom and dad, look, he's gonna, you know, wake up after his nap this afternoon and be pounding on his chest thinking he can go out and run around with the boys tonight, just keep him down for 48 hours. Um, otherwise, what happens, they get a rebound swelling about a week later, the dexamethasone burns off, and then there's this rebound swelling that they get from it. It's harmless, it's just a little alarming. So um, typically for a healthy 150, 200 pound patient, uh, I give 10 milligrams uh, in the IV at the start of the surgery. So it's on board circulating before you know, the first extraction is done or f before the first scalpel is uh, taken to tissue to uh, incise. Also given it for TMJ patients who have limited opening or difficulty for long appointment, we want to do a lot of detoxification. That dexamethasone really helps keep swelling down in the joints um, for those longer appointments. So it would be contraindicated for the elderly patients who are osteoporotic, for a poorly controlled diabetic, um, and if they have some uh, hepatic impairment or psychiatric care, probably ought to get a physician consult uh, before you do administer that, and maybe adjust your, your dose a little bit. ANSEF is a first generation cephalosporin, broad based antibiotic. Uh, use it often as well, too. Typically, a one gram dose uh, in the IV, and you can buy a vial that has to, you have to reconstitute that. So you're withdrawing a little sterile saline, uh, dissolving that in the vial, then withdrawing it and putting it in the bag, uh, the IV bag itself. So uh, the, the one gram dose assumes a full grown adult or late teen greater than 120 pounds. Uh, we we'll use that for multiple extractions when there's existing periodontal infection <coughs> or dental infection or with impacted wisdom teeth that uh, we know they're not going to be getting in with a toothbrush and keeping it very clean. Uh, I'll give the high dose of vitamin C and the ANSEF as well too just to decrease their uh, risk of a post-op infection and then they don't have another pill to take uh, when they go home as well too. It's just the, the pain meds after that. So anytime we give antibiotics, always, always recommend probiotics. And a lot of times we'll just supply them with that as well too, so they take that. Um, this is uh, Ulrich Vol on the left, uh, Swiss Dental Solutions, actually Ulrich designed and uh, marketed and sold uh, Z-Systems ceramic implant, which is, is here today as well too. 
and then a protege of his, Dominic Nishwick, uh, that we also met uh, over in Switzerland, um, some great uh, practitioners. Their protocol for detoxification of health, and again, this is in the Swiss Dental Clinic uh, that um, uh, Dietrich uh, Klinghardt is involved in, 25 grams of vitamin C. They'll use uh, magnesium sulfate as well too because it buffers the acidity of the vitamin C so you don't have that risk of phlebitis. Uh, and magnesium is a critical cofactor for all vitamin utilization. A lot of those patients, they'll have them in a week ahead of time before they do any, any treatment or surgery and just help them detoxify. The two millimeters of 2% procaine uh, is in their protocol as well, and then sodium bicarb as well too. And the sodium bicarb to help buffer the acidity uh, of the vitamin C as well too. Again, I've not had uh, anybody call back the next day with phlebitis at the IV site because of a 25 gram vitamin C if we're doing it slowly. Um, our kids, you know, when they've been down, we've given it to them, big healthy, big veins, you know, it's like 20 minutes, they're, in, you know, they're, they're full and, and they've not had any problems as well too. So it, it does help, uh, uh, Ulrich also claims it does help push one towards that parasympathetic mode as well too or being sympathetic. So this RxQ Pharmacy, I mentioned before, uh, one of you have uh, their, their uh, phone number and then the blue states are the ones that they can ship to depending on where you're at. So that is uh, worthwhile information to have. One other uh, thing I wanna add, uh, when you're going through the exhibit halls upstairs, there's a, a great man and a brilliant mind up there. You ought to shake his hand and get to know him. Barry Tan, he's a PhD biochemist. I don't know what the name is. His, uh, his lab is Green River Lab, is it? But he has tocotriene, which is uh, a vitamin E that is uh, the oral form, if you will, and an antioxidant equivalent to intravenous of vitamin C. So I've had patients on that. I take it myself as far as reducing blood pressure, kind of pre-diabetic, and it's helping with that as well, too. That's a great adjunct as well, too. So uh, take a look at that. <laughs>